Le damos paso a Jean Philippe, el jefe del Laboratorio de Biotecnología Ambiental del INRA, Instituto Nacional de Investigaciones Agronómicas. Su principal tema de investigación son la instrumentación, modelado y control y diagnóstico de procesos biológicos, con especial atención al tratamiento de las aguas residuales y procesos de producción de bioenergía. Desde 2008 es miembro representativo del sur de Europa en el Grupo Especializado de Digestión en Aerobia de la IWA, editor asociado de, dos, de 2000, ah, desde 2006 hasta 2011 de la revista Water Research y tiene más de 121 artículos en revistas internacionales, un libro, cinco capítulos de libro y 199 ponencias y conferencias internacionales. So I'm very happy to be here and thank you very much for, to, the to the organizers for inviting me and uh, I will try to tell you a little bit about uh, my experience in modeling of anaerobic co-digestion and, and I thank the previous speaker, Maria, because it's a very good introduction to what I will say. So you will see that we have similar graphs. Uh, so as you know, uh, Anaerobic digestion is a quite complex process with biochemistry involved, with microbiology also, and, and physical chemi chemical equilibrium. And there is, uh, that's similar graph, uh, the other way. So you have uh, years. So I started in the early 60s, I mean, late 60s, first papers. And uh, so now, just in one month, uh, there was already seven, uh, 57 papers on anaerobic digestion and modeling. So, in one, one, so you expect it will grow even more. And as Maria said, it's uh, uh, anaerobic digestion number one, model number one that's uh, improved, I think, this, this topic. So I will not go into details. It's a quite complex model. Uh, but the main, so I was, Expecting you would say that ADM1 can work, so my, because it works for me. So it's an, explain, it's an illustration here. Uh, USB plus fi, uh, fixed bed reactor at the top for 150 days, and, and you could fit the data quite well. Uh, we have plenty of, uh, of examples where it works, uh, 140 days of digesting microalgae. So I wanted just to go through some um, idea of what you could do with ADM1. And after, I will skip to what should be done and what is not done with ADM1. So, in for, for example, we, we had a PhD on how to optimize both biogas quantity and quality, so the ratio between CO2 and CH4. Uh, that's, that's one way to, to use ADM1, and it uh, makes a dynamic link between complex substrate and biogas quantity and quality. Another thing is also to optimize by the, by the hydrogen production, and it's in this case is how to drive the process to inhibit or, or inactivate some um, species like the one here that are producing methane, if you want to produce VFA or if you want to produce uh, hydrogen. Another one is how to model and optimize microbial diversity because you have, you have, uh, you have to find relationships between uh, process performance and the structure of the microbial community, and I will come back to this also in, in a minute. Uh, then hydrolysis, uh, ADM1 can be modified to take better into account the, the hydrolysis, which was a key issue when ADM1 started, and everyone agrees that the handling microbial um, hydrolysis was, was, a, was a key issue, so that's... Um, uh, the idea is could we find easy way uh, and to, to get reliable indicators to predict uh, waste biodegradability. And again, we'll see later that it's not the, the only issue here. Nitrogen could be an issue if you have to, do, to deal with piggery waste. So how to uh, integrate the nitrification in the model and to optimize carbon and nitrogen removal. And also we, we had a PhD on how to model the human colon uh, what the, the remaining part of the process, which is uh, a very good digester, and I will also come back to this, and um, and you will see that it's we we still have to take into account what what uh, nature uh, has told us. So everything is done, okay, uh, and I don't want to to stay here. I just want to to start with modeling of hydrolysis, and I was. Hopefully, uh, Grids will, will, will agree with me in her presentation. So, in terms of model complexity, 
you have hydrology that was taken into account in aerobic model and anaerobic model, and over the years, you have different approach to, to account for both the stoichiometry and the kinetics of hydrolysis, uh, starting in the, in the late 70s. And also later, uh, there was some papers dealing with, is hydrolysis a sequential process or a parallel process? Uh, and uh, the answer is not uh, yet uh, completely, completely known. Why? It's because if you consider hydrolysis, you have biodegradability, which is uh, the BMP, for example, value, but also you have to, have to account for the bioaccessibility and the bioavailability of the substrate, which are different issues. And just to illustrate this, and this could be hydrolysis, to illustrate this, even if you have the same biochemical composition between a peach and a coconut, you understand very easily that the accessibility is completely different. And, and you want to take into account for this, because this will drive the kinetics of your process. So what we came, so if, if you consider a sludge, it could be a sludge, any kind of waste, as different levels of, of matter, like, like a, an orange or a peach or, or a fruit, and this, the accessibility is different. So we, we find a way to have an idea of, of this accessibility combining different chemical extraction with uh, different um, solvents that will extract uh, different, the, the different part of the waste and which will mimic, and that was the, the trick, which will mimic the accessibility for microorganisms. So that's, that, there's a paper on this. So you have readily available uh, matter uh, and slowly available matter, okay, according to the waste. And you can extract this and you can make the kinetics of each of them, which is a good point. And also what you can do is to combine this chemical extraction with different, of, different kind of it's a spectral analysis of, 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 the, of the waste which give you an idea, for example, of the BMP. The main, the main this is with uh, 3D fluorescence spectroscopy, and uh, in a few minutes, you can get a model of your BMP of each fraction, which uh, instead of waiting for one month to have the BMP, you can have in, in, in a few minutes after the extraction. The extraction lasts for, for a couple of days. So this is an example. You can also use another technique, which is infrared spectro spectroscopy, and you have here um, an example of, of now it's, I mean, th this graph is 500 substrate. Uh, now we have 800 substrate, and it's, uh, so you can predict quite nicely the BMP value, again, in a few minutes in this case, uh, and this, if you're interested in it, it's, it's available on the market. Uh, there's a company who is selling, who is selling the, the prediction of, of, of BMP. So the question is, is it sequential or simultaneously? So if you, if you take the substrate, so if you take, you assume you have blue, red, and, and dark, and black uh, substrate, if it's simultaneous, you will all degrade the substrate together. And then the, the sum of degradation is this red curve. And if you look at the biogas curve, you will have something like this, which will, this part will be always lower than this one because you have um, only two substrates that are degraded here and one here. Whereas if it's sequential, you have first the blue one because it's the most accessible, then the, the red and the black is not changing. And after, once the blue is, is removed, then you switch to the, to the red and then after the removal of, of the red, you switch to the black. And the sum is this. And in terms of biogas flow rate, you can get a so situation where this is higher than this. And it's because the most accessible is not the most biodegradable part, like a coconut. Okay? And so if you look, we, uh, we ran experiment for, for tens of sub different substrates, this carrots, for example, and if you look at, at, the, at the kinetic curves, both sequential and simultaneous work. If you look at cabbage, surprisingly, uh, 
The sequential fits the curve and not the, the simultaneously. I would say, I have to say that this is 95%, 90 to 95% of the case. It is the situation when in some case you have this and you have other cases where both don't work. So the, the idea is maybe to increase the number of fractions, not having only three, but four, five. I mean, this will increase the complexity. But we want to keep it as simple as possible. And also, if you look at continuous feeding for co-digestion, if you feed the first, and if you assume it's sequential, if you feed the, f the first substrate, then you first degrade the blue, then the red, and then the black. If later you feed another one, I mean the same, but at a different time, you will f end up here with the, the red and the, and the black. And if you feed again, then you have the three parts, and then you cannot identify the model because you cannot distinguish be between sequential or parallel uh, situations. So that, that's still a problem. Other remaining challenges, uh, microbial diversity. I, I, I really like this aspect and, and maybe it's too far from applicability, but it's, it's maybe an issue. If this, in this case, it's uh, it's a study on, on uh, uh, human being, okay? So each point on the x-axis is one person, and it's analysis of the diversity and the metabolic product of this microbial ecosystem for each individual. And what you can, so you, it's, uh, for example, it's, uh, here it's a mouse, uh, the tongue, uh, ears, nose, etc. And what you can see is you have a quite a diverse microbial diversity. Okay, it's evolving to each individual, but the spectra of product you get is quite stable. And the other thing is when it's very low diversity, so mainly one species, you have quite diverse uh, spectra of product at the end. So there are challenges uh, to, to take this to, into account in, in a met, m mathematical model, because how to handle this diversity of microbes and to keep the product stable at the end. And there is one uh, way to do it is to account for thermodynamics. And this is uh, uh, what you can end up with is according to acetate, and this is a difference of, of, of of uh, abundance of the gills of different microbes. So you could see that you, at the end, you will always end up with the same, I mean, the, the gill will change over the operating conditions, but it will be quite stable and you will converge with a, 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 a microbial population that will have the same product at the end. And to do this, it's, it's a little bit tricky, but you have to combine anabolic and catabolic reactions in the metabolism and to account for, for yeah, uh, thermodynamics, you account for uh, temperature also. The main difference is uh, mono, uh, I mean the maximum growth rate now is completely changed to what is available usually on the, in the literature and it's a little bit more complex but it's, uh, <coughs> it's quite efficient and I will not go into detail uh, with this but you have all the reference if you're interested. Other remaining challenges, uh, this one I like also, never forget mother nature. <laughs> if you look the design of digesters, according to the waste you deal with, you, and from an engineering point of view, you go from few kilograms COD per cubic meter and per day to let's say 100 maximum with a very biodegradable substrate. And if you look in nature, the cow is 220 kilogram COD per cubic meter and per day, and the termite, who is, a, who is a world champion, is, is 400. And if you still think with the way we think about the gesture, maybe we will reach 120, 150, but we will never reach 100, uh, 400. So what we did is we analyzed different digestive tracts and to analyze the effect of either the substrate uh, the, the operating conditions or the design of the process and to see if, there, if there's a, a, a link between these different aspects with the performance of, of the digesters, okay? 
And, and by the way, this is a this is an Argentinian patent to recover biogas uh, from the cow. And uh, the first surprise we had is by analyzing the microbial diversity of 190, even 192 digestive tracts. Here you have the weight of the animals, and here you have the logarithmic scale of microbial diversity. And we were quite of surprised that you could get a kind of a straight line between, uh, between the different uh, digesters. The main difference is the volume of the digesters. So here you are at lab scale, and here you are at, at full scale. And so, and if there's anyone interested by financing a PhD on this, because we don't have the answer, is why is it different, the microbial diversity, if you work at few liters of, or 100 liters or, or 100 cubic meters, etc. And what is the impact of, of, on the performance? Because in nature, it's what happens. The other thing is the design. And the design, according to where you are in the digestive tract, you have either a batch reactor, a CSTR, CSTR in series, and plug flow reactors. Okay? So you have these different configurations, and you have also different pretreatments. The pretreatment could be pH, that's what we have in, your, in, in our mouth, or also it could be enzymatic, the enzyme coming from either the host or either the microbial ecosystem, okay? So if you combine this pretreatment with the, de the design of the reactors, you end up with 24 co configurations. And in nature, well, nature selected eight, which means maybe if you want to degrade I don't know, if you want to design an experiment with plug flow reactors with acidic pH as a pretreatment, well, uh, if nature didn't select this configuration, maybe it's not a good option to recover energy from the waste. And also in terms of volume, uh, if you look at carnivorous, omnivorous, and herbivorous, so you can like rank the substrate as really biodegradable substrate and slowly biodegradable substrate. And if you look at the volume of each part of the, of the react, of the digesters, you end up with these kind of things. Big reactors in some cases uh, and, um, and, and the plug flow reactor after, and another configuration at the, at the bottom. It's not precise numbers, but it's order of magnitudes. So again, the design of reactors or digesters could be related to the, the, the readiness or not of the substrate. And just to convince you, here you have different configuration. The cow, for example, here, llama, uh, which are, are producing methane. Kangaroo, the digestive tract, is completely different, and it's the only herbivorous that is not producing any methane, and oasin, it's the only bird that is producing methane, and it's a different configuration compared to any birds you find on, on the planet. So maybe the configuration, again, of the digester could be uh, driven by, by these aspects in terms of volume. And as a conclusion, well, uh, the remaining question is how to include all these aspects. If you want to make an optimal design of your reactors based on the model, even if you use a complex model like ADM1, you can modify it the way you want. You will never convert with, with this kind of, of configuration. So something is still lacking in the mathematical model, which is, since a model for me, it's nothing else than the translation of what we know about the process. So we still, we still lack some knowledge about, about, the, about the, what is occurring in digesters. I do thank you for your attention. Muchas gracias.